Automobiles are constantly evolving with new innovations to meet the needs of users such as bench seats, vent windows, etc. However, not all inventions are successful. Here are 10 inventions that no longer exist. Bench seats. There was a time in automotive history when roads were dominated by sizable sedans like the 1963 Chevrolet Impala and 1972 Cadillac DeVille. Those lanky yet stylish vehicles came equipped with powerful engines, elongated bodies, and plush interiors for added comfort. A commonality between most of these iconic models, the front bench seat. The bench seat drew its influence from the horse-drawn carriage. It was the perfect solution for drivers who needed to accommodate large families. Halloween for a six-person squeeze compared to the standard five-passenger vehicle. Back then, drive-in movies were all the rage, and the post-war economic boom pushed carmakers to regulate the affordable, family-oriented vehicles. So what happened to the front bench seat? A combination of changing tastes and safety precautions led to the decline of the bench seat. As European sports cars started to play an influence on consumer taste, Automakers flipped the switch on those long body styles and started producing smaller, sportier vehicles. With that said, the real factor contributing to the disappearance of the front bench seat came down to improved safety regulations. Automakers were faced with the task of incorporating airbags in cars and providing better seatbelt safety. This made it increasingly difficult for the front bench seat to remain a safe option. The middle seat inevitably lacked the protection that the driver and passenger now had. In no time, the bucket seat was born. It wasn't long before the middle seat got replaced with a center console, which inevitably became the hidden junk drawer of the vehicle. It became a place you could stash some extra cash or keep everyday essentials on hand. Today, select trucks are the only vehicles that still carry the nostalgia of the front bench seat. But I wouldn't go as far to say that it has the same charm as it did back then. Will the front bench seat make a full comeback? I can't say for sure, but as we look back on this nostalgic trend that once dominated auto manufacturing from the 1930s to 1970s, it is clear to see its impact was valued. Families and teenagers alike cherished the capability of fitting as many passengers as possible. Mind you, the nostalgia of classic cars just wouldn't be the same if it wasn't for the front bench seat. These days, it's almost a luxury to experience a ride in a classic old-timer with a front bench seat. For car enthusiasts, it's just another cherished feature of their car memorabilia. In due time, I think we'll see a little bit of our automotive past make its way back into concept cars, specifically with a new take on passenger seating. Thanks to self-driving vehicles, the possibility of the front bench seat returning is not all that far-fetched. Do you prefer bench seats or bucket seats Will the front bench seat make a comeback? Tell us what you think below. Two vent windows. For those too young to remember vent windows, vinyl seats that left branding marks on your thighs and car interiors that felt like ovens, cars used to have small triangular windows in front of the driver and passenger windows. Those vent windows could be unlocked and then angled outward so they would catch the wind and blow it directly onto your face or other important areas of the body that require cooling. And back before air conditioning, those vent windows could mean the difference between showing up at work, ready to suck up to the boss, and showing up for work, looking like you'd just played two hours of one-on-one -on -one with LeBron James. But almost every car now comes with air conditioning. So if it's so hot that simply lowering a window won't cut it, you always have the option of rolling up the windows and turning the temperature down to 70 degrees. And that leads to the second reason why you don't see vent windows anymore. Cars are actually more fuel efficient with all of their windows closed and the air conditioner on, even when you factor in the energy used to power the air conditioner. A lot of work and science go into making cars aerodynamic these days, so as to maximize mileage. And in order to make the wind flow around the car, the windows have to be closed to create a smooth exterior surface. If you open the windows, you increase the car's wind resistance and reduce its fuel mileage, especially at higher speeds. And that's just with the regular windows open. If you were to push out one of the windows so it was perpendicular to the car, which is what vent windows did, it'd be like mounting a pizza box on your door. It would kill the aerodynamic profile of the vehicle. Three, ashtrays. 
Once ubiquitous in vehicles, ashtrays and cigarette lighters bore testament to the widespread practice of smoking throughout the 20th century. However, as society's awareness of the health hazards associated with smoking heightened and the habit lost favor socially, these features gradually receded into the background. Stringent regulations, particularly those prohibiting smoking in cars, especially in the presence of children, further diminished the relevance of in-car ashtrays. In contemporary vehicle design, built-in ashtrays are largely absent, but the legacy lives on through the repurposing of the cigarette lighter socket. Today, this socket has evolved into a power source that primarily utilized for charging electronic devices such as smartphones and GPS units, employing USB adapters. 4. Column Shifters Column shifters are a type of gear shift lever that is mounted on the steering column of cars and trucks with manual transmissions. They were first introduced to the American market in 1938 and quickly became popular on budget and mid-range models. Column shifters have several advantages such as a compact design that saves space in the front of the vehicle and ease of use. However, they also have some disadvantages such as difficulty shifting gears accurately while the vehicle is in motion and the potential to obstruct the driver's view. In the 1970s, the rise of automatic transmissions led to the decline of column shifters. Automatic transmissions are easier and more convenient to use and they do not require a gear shift lever. In addition, changes in automotive design also contributed to the obsolescence of column shifters. Modern cars typically have a simpler, more modern design with smooth, flowing lines. Column shifters have a rather bulky and heavy design that is not compatible with modern design trends. Today, column shifters are only found on a few classic and antique cars. They are often considered a special and iconic feature of these vehicles. Causes of the disappearance of column shifters. The following are the causes of the disappearance of column shifters. The rise of automatic transmissions changes in automotive design. Some disadvantages of column shifters, such as difficulty shifting gears accurately while the vehicle is in motion and the potential to obstruct the driver's view. 5. Record Player During the 1950s and 1960s, the concept of integrating record players into automobiles took root, a period when vinyl records reigned supreme as the primary music medium. Luxury vehicles, aspiring to provide the epitome of in-car entertainment, embraced the trend by incorporating built-in record players. Unfortunately, this ambitious idea faced practical challenges. The inherent instability of bumpy roads and uneven terrains frequently led to needle skips, thereby disrupting the overall listening experience. As alternative music technologies such as cassette tapes and later CDs gained popularity, the once innovative in-car record player rapidly faded into obsolescence. Landau bars. Once gracing the flanks of luxury cars, Landau bars with their gleaming curves echoed the folding roofline of their namesake carriage. Though purely ornamental, these non-functional appendages added a touch of timeless elegance. Bathed in chrome or another high shine metal, they perched atop rear quarter panels, whispering the illusion of a convertible even when the roof remained resolutely fixed. However, as automotive aesthetics evolved, the ornate whimsy of Landau bars started to feel superfluous, ultimately fading from favor. Today, their presence on modern vehicles is as rare as a sighting of their horseless ancestors. Yet, for those who cherish the bygone era of chrome and tail fins, Landau bars remain a wistful whisper of a mid-20th century design language. Car phones. In the heady days before ubiquitous cell phones, car phones gleamed as signifiers of luxury and cutting-edge technology in the 80s and 90s. Grafted directly onto dashboards, these vehicular marvels unleashed the revolutionary thrill of making calls while hurtling down the highway. But the winds of technological evolution blew fast and fair. As mobile phones became ever more accessible and feature-rich, the built-in car phone's reign swiftly drew to a close. Modern automobiles, their sleek interfaces brimming with Bluetooth magic, embrace the personal cell phone, weaving it into the tapestry of hands-free communication. And so, the once prestigious car phone, its antenna a silent sentinel, faded into the nostalgic mist, a forgotten relic of a bygone era in automotive tech. Hood Ornaments 
Once flamboyant sentinels perched atop car noses, hood ornaments have dimmed their chrome-plated reign. Born as playful mascots, they morphed into badges of luxury and status, each brand's emblem a defiant declaration of identity. But shadows arose, concerns for pedestrian safety cast a long chill, deeming these prout protrusions potential threats in the ballot of the open road. So, one by one, automakers banished them from dashboards, some succumbing to retractable discretion, others fitting into the twilight of automotive history. Yet, while relegated to relics of a Bioni era, hood ornaments retain their nostalgic glow, whispering tales of artistry and a time when cars were more than mere metal chariots. They were rolling testaments to the human desire for adornment and expression. Nine pop-up headlights. From the 1960s to the 1990s, pop-up headlights, also known as retractable or flip-up headlights, reigned as a distinctive and iconic feature of many sports cars. This captivating design hid the headlights within the car's hood or fenders when inactive, only to dramatically rise or pop up when illumination was needed. More than just a technical gimmick, this feature enhanced the car's sleek aerodynamics and futuristic aura, sometimes even injecting a touch of playful charm. However, as automotive design evolved, concerns over aerodynamics, complex mechanical systems, and stricter pedestrian safety regulations led to the decline of pop-up headlights in modern vehicles. While no longer a common sight on new cars, these captivating lights remain a nostalgic and beloved element for many auto enthusiasts. Ten Luggage Racks once a prominent feature of many cars, particularly during the 1970s and 80s, luggage racks perched on trunks offered an external storage solution for travelers. These racks secured bags and other items outside the car, but their reign ultimately waned. As car designs evolved, their sleek profiles rendered external racks less necessary. Additionally, security concerns arose regarding items left exposed to theft and harsh weather. Finally, the growing aesthetic appeal of cars without these bulky appendages sealed their fate. It is likely that these features will never come back, or will only come back after a very long time. If you could bring back one feature on a car, which feature would you like to bring back? Please comment below this video.